Hey everybody, Brad Kramer with Provenio Consulting here. I'm going to talk about some uh, differences between Minnesota and federal OSHA. I live in Minnesota, so um, Minnesota has a state-run um, state OSHA program, MinOSHA. And so these, these differences are only applicable in the state of Minnesota. So if you're in Minnesota like I am, um, I see a lot of companies that um, they, they try and follow the OSHA regulations. So they have the uh, 1910 you know, OSHA regulation book um, and they don't necessarily know that, that uh, they're under a different set of rules for, for a number of different things. So um, real briefly, we're not gonna go into a lot of detail just so that you know these different um, differences are out there if you're in the state of Minnesota operating, operating a business. So um, the first one I'll talk about is the AWARE program. MinOSHA requires the accident, a workplace accident and injury reduction program. Um, so that's gonna um, take the place of the um, I2P2 or um, injury and illness prevention um, program that's in, in federal OSHA stuff. All right, so that's going to require um, a little bit different, uh, uh, basically setup. It's basically putting a lot of different standards or a lot of different policies that you're going to have in your workplace, and you should put them together under one policy. So things like reporting, uh, reporting worksite injuries, um, doing your incident investigation, and then um, safety committees, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, basically, it kind of puts all those things together. Um, so your company should have an aware program. Um, the second thing is, like I just mentioned, a safety committee. Uh, MinOSHA requires any business with uh, more than 25 employees to have a safety committee. They don't uh, dictate how often they have to meet or anything like that, um, but you should make sure it's reasonable. So if you say we meet every two years, um, they're going to find that um, to be um, not reasonable and probably cite you for that. Um, and also, um, there are target employers um, that are that if they have like um, high number of injuries and stuff like that compared to others in their NAICS code, um, they also have to have a safety committee as well. Um, the next thing is the HAZCOM or Hazard Communication Programs. Uh, Minnesota um, has uh, what's called Employee Right to Know Program. Um, and, and some differences there are um, the HASCOM program has to be trained annually. So federal OSHA only requires it um, when you have a new employee or when they just change your ad or change your job duties, or if there's a change in the workplace, the chemicals used, stuff like that, right? So MinOSHA requires training every single year. And they also add in their infectious disease control. So if you uh, have any potential for um, let's say they're on an emergency response team or something like that. So they might come in contact with blood or they have to clean up vomit or anything like that. Um, that also has to be added into the HASCOM program. So they should be trained on those bloodborne pathogens. Um, also, um, Minnesota has more stringent uh, PELS, permissible exposure limits. Um, so we have our, our whole, uh, if you look at in the, uh, the federal OSHA standard book, I'm just going to open this up to the page here. So um, we have PELS. The federal standard has PELS in uh, um, Appendix Z. Well, Minnesota has their own Appendix Z. So for example, in the, the federal guidelines, um, the, the PEL for carbon monoxide is 50 parts per million. In the state of Minnesota, that's 35 parts per million. So um, if you're any chemicals that you have in your work site, you want to make sure that you're within the PELs of Minnesota, not just the federal OSHA, because we're going to be more stringent. Um, all employees in Minnesota, all employers in Minnesota with 11 or more employees have to do the uh, um, record keeping, so the, the OSHA 300 logs. Um, so federal OSHA does give exemptions for companies that are, you know, might be in a safer industries and stuff like that. State OSHA does not have those exemptions. So if you have 11 or more employees, um, you automatically have to do those, those, uh, those record reporting of any injuries, all right? Um, also, Minnesota OSHA requires if you have any type of internal combustion engines in your facility. So um, if you have forklifts, if you have a skid steer load or anything like that that operates within your facility. Um, so even if it's LP or natural gas powered, um, those have to be tested um, for their carbon monoxide output at the, the exhaust system. And you also have to do quarterly testing, not just on your forklift or your equipment, but throughout the plant to make sure your air quality is good so that you don't have a buildup of carbon monoxide. 
And finally, they require high, high vis vests. Um, so like the yellow vest with the uh, reflective striping on it, um, any place where you're going to have a lot of traffic, right? So if you have a, a fork, forklift yard or something like that, where, you know, a warehouse, a lot of traffic out in that yard, um, they're going to require the high vis vest, right? So those are just some changes or not some changes, recent changes, but some changes between Minnesota OSHA and federal OSHA. Um, I see a lot of clients that I go to didn't know that there was a difference between the two or that Minnesota OSHA required additional requirements. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there and, and hopefully that helps you to uh, be compliant in, in both state and federal OSHA. So again, if you're in Minnesota, um, those, those uh, different standards apply to you. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you very much and have a great day.